Hey guys, I'm Andrid here, and today we're back at it, working on my 1994 C4 Corvette. And today's project is uh, not super exciting, but it's something I think I need to do. For those of you that have been following me for a while now, I've been trying to get my car to run. It's been sitting here for like a year. I've done some different things. I've done complete fuel system, including fuel pump, sending unit, pressure regulator, filter, all that stuff. I've done oxygen sensors, um, just tons of different things. I've been having a backfiring, hesitation, missing issue uh, with the car for a while. So about a year and a half ago, I had swapped out the distributor in it, uh, the Opta Spark, for an aftermarket one that would make it more of a newer, newer style. So it's vented and stuff like that versus the 1994, which is a sealed unit. I think maybe that unit is just bad. I'm kind of uh, out of options as to what else could be wrong with the car aside from something drastic like blown head gaskets and stuff like that. But we're going to go ahead and swap out the OptiSpark for a factory replacement unit, get rid of the vacuum lines and stuff again, um, and see if we can't get the car to run normally. So here's some of the things I'll be doing while I'm in there. I'm going to go ahead and replace the the thermostat while I'm in there, water pump gaskets, I've got my temperature uh, sending units there we're gonna replace and then here's that OptiSpark I ordered. Uh, comes with the cable to plug into the factory harness um, and then here is that unit. I actually ordered this from Rock Auto. Um, I'll put the part numbers and stuff all down below um, in the description but we've got to take all of this apart right there, the entire front of the vehicle to get to this thing so that's what we're going to be doing. And for me, I'm a, I'm a tall guy, six foot four, and this is a low sitting car. And then I lowered it about an inch and a half at the front anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and jack up the front, put some jack stands under it. So that way I can get to this stuff easier than having to lean all the way down in there to do it because that's a long ways away. All right, so I've got the car jacked up on this side, jack stand underneath there. I'm going to be accessing everything I need to from this side of the car, except maybe a couple bolts. So I'm not going to jack up the other side. That may change as I get in there if it becomes uh, more of a chore than I was thinking. I may end up jacking up the other side, but for now, I'm just going to jack up this side of the car and get in there and take care of things. The first thing we're going to do is just take apart the air intake stuff here, get that out of the way. Got to drain the radiator. So I'll get down here, um, pull that hose off, let the coolant leak out because we do have to pull the water pump off to get to this OptiSpark. And that in itself is part of the reason these things fail because water pumps will fail, they will leak, they will get the OptiSpark wet and that could cause a failure. But that's just part of owning one of these cars, makes it exciting. And I don't know if I'm going to go through every step of this for you guys. I mean, some of you guys probably know what you're doing if you're watching this video, if you have one of these anyway. But in order to take this off, there's a clamp here, clamp here, a wire connection here, wire connection down here on the mass airflow sensor. We're just going to unhook those, pull that apart, and get it out of here quick. And then again, on mine, I had replaced my OptiSpark once with a 95-96 LT1 style, so it has a vacuum hose that I had uh, installed here. I'm just gonna remove that and we're gonna plug the hole there that I had made when I put that in because we are going back to the factory style non-vented Opti for the this install. All right, and then we're gonna, like I said, empty the, uh, the coolant out of the uh, radiator and engine and stuff so that we can pull those hoses off in the water pump. Underneath the car here on the passenger side, that's looking up at the back side or the bottom side of the radiator, there's a, little uh, uh, drain uh, thing right there that you're gonna just uh, unscrew and that's gonna let our antifreeze coolant drain out a little bit. And there we go, we got it draining. So we'll let it drain for a little bit and then we'll uh, start pulling things apart. And just a little tip, if you got the car jacked up, even if you don't, it's probably easiest to get that little drain right through here, right uh, down along so the tire is able to just reach my hand down in there and reach it down here loosen it and then uh that's actually how i got to that a lot easier than trying to lay on the ground and do it all right so once the coolant is drained a couple other things we got to do we're gonna unplug the coolant temp sensor here just get that out of the way we will be replacing that sensor that's the one that goes to the computer 
Then we're gonna disconnect the upper hose, lower hose, the heater hose, um, hoses and all that stuff through here. Get all of that moved out of the way. Um, and then we'll have to get down to the belt tensioner here. Uh, loosen the belt, take the belt off. Uh, just to make it a little bit easier to get in there, we're gonna have to pull it off once we get to the OptiSpark anyway. So we'll just get all that out of the way now. All right, and now that we're in here too, it would be a really good uh, time to change heater hoses, uh, ignition coil if you needed to, um, your belt, anything like that. And again, uh, this water pump I put on about a year ago, so it's new. Um, I am gonna swap out the thermostat since I'm pulling everything out, but it'd be a good time to do all of that stuff since it's all pulled apart anyway. And I've got, I've got the hoses all just tucked over here, the heater hoses. Radiator hose, I put all the wire harnesses over here off to the side because we're gonna have to get to the bolts in the top and bottom on both sides of there. I gotta pull this hose off still. And then uh, the water pump assembly is about ready to come out. And then a couple quick notes. The three bolts on this side you can get to no problem. In order to access two of the water pump bolts on the driver's side, you will have to have the belt off so the tensioner is out of the way. And then to make it easier, you may wanna pull your alternator off because the third one is tucked way back in there. And if I remember right, it was super difficult to get to um, without going down there. I might be able to get it from right here. We'll find out when I get in there here in a second. You know, as I'm making this video and you're there watching it, you might be wondering to yourselves, Dren, why the heck do you have this car? You're always working on it. It doesn't run right. The Optus Spark on them is trash. I mean, there's a million reasons not to have one of these cars. But, I mean, I'm like mid 40s. So when I was in high school, this was the Corvette. This is the car that was out there. It's the car I drooled over. So that's why I have one. And that's why I spend so much time and money and effort on it. Um, I've done a lot of work to this car. You know, I've only made a couple videos for it, but I have done tons of work to this car. Replaced the entire interior, all the carpet, all the trim. Um, replaced all the weather stripping on the car. Um, I said I've lowered it, done the complete suspension work to it. Just tons of different things. So I do love this car and I love working on it. I just wish that it would run consistently. Is that too much to ask? Um, however, I will say, this is the last time I'm gonna do an OptiSpark on this car. Um, if this thing fails, which it probably will, let's be honest, um, my next option, I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm either gonna switch it out to a coil on plug conversion, or I'm just gonna bite the bullet and do an LS swap. And that's really what I want to do, so that's probably where we'll end up going. I don't know what the time frame is on that, but I do wanna get this thing up to about, you know, five, 600 horsepower. It's just something super fun to drive on the street as opposed to the 300 horsepower stock. But for those of you wondering why do I have the car, this is why. All right, and if you wanna do this without pulling the alternator off, you can see I'm going through the uh, power steering pump, one of the uh, um, little holes in the front there. I've got an extension attached to a swivel attached to the socket back there. So that's how I'm gonna get this side off. All right, so then there's the water pump out of the car. You can see there's the uh, OptiSpark right there. We gotta pull out, so in order to get to that, we gotta pull off the harmonic balancer there on the bottom uh, and get that loosened up. But then we're uh, almost to where we've got to be to finish the project up. To make this easier, you could have removed the ignition coil, um, but you were able to wiggle it out just fine. Not a problem. Getting it back in will be about as easy. So it's coming along pretty quickly. And there's the three bolts that hold on the harmonic balancer down there. And now it's just a matter of prying it off. Um, and again, I had my car apart about a year ago, so this is coming apart pretty easily for me. If you've never done this on your car or your car hasn't had the OptiSpark changed in 20 plus years. It's gonna take a little bit more time. I can't connect to your Wi-Fi network. Open the Google Home app to reconnect to Wi-Fi. Well, that's 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 great, Google, thanks. Um, so if you haven't had yours pulled apart, it's gonna probably take a little bit more time. Mine's coming apart pretty easily. I mean, total work time, it's been maybe 10 minutes tops to do this. So it's going pretty quick, as you guys can see. Yours may take a little longer just based on uh, how long it's been here and how hard uh, it is to get these bolts out. All right, once those bolts are out, we just gotta pry off the harmonic balancer. Again, mine's gonna be super easy probably compared to some that you guys will have to do because mine was off recently. I'm gonna have to get a longer pry bar, I think, here because it's just wobbling back and forth on me, but you can see just a matter of really just 
prying it off against that distributor on the back there. And uh, just giving yourself some room to get the distributor unbolted and pulled off. All right, so this harmonic balancer is loose. And this is something that might be unique because I've heard that this doesn't happen on all these cars. But I'm able to get this out of mine. I just had it. Um, which I've heard uh, is not the case on all these cars. So mine came right out, giving me tons of room. Just a matter of wiggling it around. I don't know why mine is, where I've watched other videos, people not being able to do that. Hopefully yours is uh, as easy, because now tons of room, easy to get to, no problem. Okay, so there's three bolts that hold that distributor on, then once they're out, it just slides off. Um, and this is where, super important to be aware of a couple things. One, don't just disconnect your plug wires from the distributor without notating the order, because you want to know your firing order. Um, I was looking to see if I could slide this forward enough just to lay it out of the way and put my new one in there and uh, put the, the wires on the new one, which it looks like I should be able to. So you can see I've got the wires right there. I've got the wires right there. Plenty of uh, room in here, it looks like, for me just to slide this forward and then disconnect these one at a time, slide my new distributor down in there. So that's what we're going to do. So I actually have the service manual for my Corvette. So it's got all this information around how to disassemble everything and put it together. Something that's super helpful in here, and in case you didn't know, it does show you which cylinders are which in the car and where they connect to on the distributor for each side. So at the front of the car on the passenger side, it's two, four, six, eight. And then it shows where on the distributor they will actually connect in case you were to pull it all apart, not pay attention and then start freaking out. There's a, a good image for you there. And then same with the other side, just goes from front to back um, on the head, one, three, five, seven. And then you can see here, cylinder one, seven, three, and five, where they actually connect on the distributor in case you need that. And there's the new OptiSpark installed. Uh, looks good, it's red, matches my uh, ignition coil there. But again, make sure you reference the uh, firing order and make sure you get that connected the correct way. Super, super, super important. And then also, the OptiSpark, do not force it in. It will only fit one way. On the shaft, on the back of the Opti is a little groove that will only fit in one place. I'll show you that on the old one I pulled out. Not super easy to see, but right here, one spline is actually like two splines together. It's wider than the rest, if you can see that on there. That will only slide into the, the actual vehicle one way. So super important to make sure you get that lined up correctly. Hopefully that shows up good on the video, but it will only fit in there one way. All right, and a couple things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this sensor. Well, I've got the water pump out with a new uh, temp sensor. And then down here is your weep hole on your bottom of your water pump. I put a little nipple in there, a 90 degree angle with some rubber hose to route that around the distributor, the OptiSparks. So that way, if that happens to leak, it will not leak onto the distributor. So just a couple uh, tips while you got this thing pulled apart to go ahead and just take care of while you're doing this. And the other thing I'm doing on the water pump too is going to replace the thermostat, which is uh, right here on the top under the housing. I am replacing this with a lower temperature thermostat, so that way it opens up sooner, helps keep the engine cooler. Anyone that has one of these cars knows they tend to run a little warm, so I want to help keep things cool on it. All right, so now distributors in, water pumps ready with new uh, thermostat, new temperature sending unit, and I've got water pump gaskets here. So I'm gonna use some uh, spray a gasket, tacky adhesive sealer stuff to put on there to kind of hold those gaskets in place down there while I slide the water pump in. I'm gonna bolt it all back together and this thing should be uh, up and running in no time, to be honest. And then something you may wanna do too, pull out the ignition coil and control module. They sit like right back here. It'll make it much easier to get the fuel pump uh, or the water pump in and out right there. I got it out with no problem, but to get it back in, I did have to pull off that uh, bracket there to make it a little bit easier. Just uh, another helpful little tip there. 
All right, so distributors changed. Honestly, the job is hard the first time just because I didn't know what I was doing. This is my, I don't know, third time, second time doing this. It goes pretty quickly. Um, I did take a couple days to do it because it got to a point when I was reassembling it, I just got kind of frustrated, so I walked away. Let it sit for a, a day, and now it's all put back together. Uh, get ready to fire it up soon, and I'm hoping this fixes my problem because next option, I guess, is to pull the motor and put in a new one. So I'm going to fire it up here shortly, um, let it warm up, let the thermostat open up, make sure the coolant is uh, flowing, get it topped off, and uh, I'm going to cool off myself as well with a nice uh, cold one here while uh, I get ready to do that. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to try to fire up my Corvette, see what happens. Hopefully good things. Hopefully good things. It's not a good start to things. Well, that sucks. We probably, this winter maybe, I'll do it. God damn it, that sucks. Super disappointed after all that work of doing that. And I was really hoping that it was going to run. So, there you go, guys. At least you know how to change your Optispark in your car. Even though mine doesn't run. 